our team, the team from our school, from our college, from our town. Teams bring us together. They give us a sense of identity and community spirit. They create traditions that we hold on to and pass to new generations. But traditions can also divide us. At the University of Mississippi, students are questioning whether traditions tied to the Civil War and segregation continue to belong on their campus. When you grow up in Mississippi, you become quite familiar with the Confederate flag, with uh, symbols of the Confederacy. And so those things just became synonymous with Ole Miss. When you're a child, you make a connection between those symbols and the place that you love. I love football. I love sports. It's something that I share deeply with my dad and my family. But going into the Grove, I was very uncomfortable. How could I have anything in common with a person that, you know, puts the Confederate flag in my face and I understand why it doesn't you know, hurt me. One tradition to emerge in the past decade was the chanting of a segregationist slogan at the end of the Ole Miss fight song from Dixie with Love. It really gets a lot of students pumped up. They stand up and they sort of rock from side to side and they have their pom-poms, you know, waving through the air. And everyone is just really connected. At the end of the song, a lot of students said in a you know very loud way the south will rise again you get chills it's hard to express how proud it makes you feel to be in that stadium cheering for Ole Miss to be a student here Wind from Dixie with Love started to be played. I feel like African American students almost would brace themselves because they knew it's coming. They would just sit down because it was the one time that they felt like they weren't a part of our university. I can understand those who, who say the South Rise again with pride because, you know, I'm very proud of where I'm from. But it's a chant that was used by the, the KKK talking about the restoration of the Confederacy that echoes segregation and racial discrimination. There's a lot of power in words. That statement made people feel like we were back when James Meredith was fighting to get into this university in 1962. The town of Oxford is an armed camp following riots that accompany the registration of the first Negro in the university's 118-year history. This university, in the minds of many people, is associated with injustice and intolerance. Those of us who love this place have been working for years, uh, not just change the, to change the perception of that intolerance, but to change the reality of it. A few years earlier, the campus was rocked and divided when an African-American student reported that he was verbally assaulted and pushed down the stairs at a fraternity house. The African-American students believe one, you know, story. The white students believe one story. It underscored the social segregation on campus that we had seen lurking under the surface. That incident sparked Jake McGraw and Melissa Cole to find a way to bring students together. They formed an organization called One Mississippi. The main thing I've been hearing is that people can just not just, you know, I can't be Melissa in front of Jake, and Jake can't be Jake in front of me. So what, what can we do as students in order to encourage this realness? I feel like um, so many people are holding on to what happened in the past between races, and they're mad about from with Dixie with love. And in order for us to progress, people have to let go of that anger and that hatred. We talked about the things that are separating us as a student body. And 
the South Rise of Jin Chan was one of the most prominent examples. Is it a mask? We had done things to address social segregation on campus, but we had never done anything where we were standing up for something to that magnitude. Artero Rogers, the third African-American student body president at Old Miss, took the issue of banning the chant to the student senate. The chancellor, who was serving his first term, supported the students and appealed to the Old Miss community to stop the chant, or he would also ban the fight song from Dixie with Love. I probably would have waited for people to have a, a better chance to get to know me, for me to not have my first major public events uh, be ones that were associated with controversy. But our elected student leadership had said, it's time now to make this change. It's time for this to stop. This new chancellor that hasn't even been here a year is coming in and trying to take away these things that are so much a part of, of our life as students and so much a part of this university. How dare he? The alumni were also divided about the chant. We need to be progressive, and we do not want anybody to come here and have difficult feelings because of something that we might do that might be offensive to them. I don't think a bunch of students chanting at the University of Mississippi during a football game hurts the University of Mississippi's reputation in any way, period. It's silliness. The student senate passed legislation banning the chant 59 to 1. But tension soon escalated, and Artaire and the chancellor came under attack. It was a painful time. Uh, there, there were people who were writing ugly things. There were uh, ugly phone calls from students and from alumni. I was under a lot of pressure. I was very nervous. I couldn't sleep for a couple of days. I had trouble eating. We were trying to bring encouragement to each other that the pain that was coming in our lives personally would be of benefit to the university. We heard that the Ku Klux Klan was, was coming, that they want to protest and they were coming. And just hearing that gave me, gave me chills. Melissa Cole and I and, and some of the other leaders in one Mississippi didn't even question that we, we had to take action. We knew that we did. We decided to hold a counter protest uh, here in the labyrinth. And on the back of our shirts, there was the saying, turn your back on Haiti. And in parentheses, it, it said, I live by the University of Mississippi Creed. We wanted to bring in as many alumni of the university, fans of football, and incorporate them because it wasn't just a rally for students, it was for the Ole Miss community. I remember people of all colors, all races coming together to stand up to the KKK and say, what you're doing is not right. I believe in academic freedom. We recite the University of Mississippi Creed over and over and over again. The University of Mississippi is a community of learning. Dedicated to nurturing excellence and intellectual inquiry. And personal character. They're in an, an open and diverse, diverse environment. environment. As, As a voluntary member, member of this community, community, I believe in respect for the dignity of each person. We read it for about 20 minutes until someone came over and said, they left. They were looking to provoke the crowd. And because we had led this, this peaceful counter demonstration, they threw up their hands and they said, there's no use protesting here. We show people that this is the future of, of Ole Miss. And we're not only turning our back to hate, but we're changing it into love. One of my, my best friends, chanted the South Rise Again the loudest of anybody in the football stadium. He called me up and said, I want to know where you're having your counter demonstration, because I'm going to be out there. He showed up at the rally, and he, he said the creed the loudest of anybody in our circle. This season in our football stadium, there's not a loud chant of the South Will Rise Again. But I'm so proud of our students for taking a stand. 
This is a happier and healthier place because of our bold students who provided great leadership. We want one Mississippi to keep, you know, the, the ball rolling on this change in Ole Miss and really show people that a place so connected with such a history can not only reconcile with it but can change for the better.